uh, Alita Menosa, I know her. So when I saw her on screen, I was like, oh, oh. my God. You didn't know what's going on behind yeah. doors with her. Nason was wearing a white robe, bathrobe. He was recording the sex. What they're telling the members, so they photoshopped them in there. That yeah. is not real. Oh, my God. Hey, what's up, guys? It's X Morgan with My Spiritual Life. And today I'm super excited because I have some of my ex La Luz del Mundo friends who are going to be covering um, their thoughts and opinions on the recent release of the HBO series. Uh, what, what's it called? Unveiling? Unveiled. Unveiled. That's what it is, uh, which is a documentary that HBO just released about La Luz del Mundo. And this was just like on December 7th. So very recently. And I'm so excited to get their perspective on it. I really enjoyed the documentary. Um, I highly recommend you guys go check it out. And uh, obviously, this is going to have spoilers if that matters to anyone. <laughs> and uh, so before we get into it, um, why don't you guys take a minute to introduce yourselves? And you guys might remember Michael on the right there. I think he's on the right if you guys are watching this. Yeah. Michael did a full length interview with me um, a couple months ago. So you might recognize him. Uh, so why don't you each just introduce yourselves briefly and then we'll get talking about the documentary. Hi, I'm Gabby. I was in uh, the church, uh, La Luz del Mundo, since the age of seven all the way to 21. Judith, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Judith Hernandez. I was born and raised in La Luz del Mundo, and I just left the church um, uh, after Nason got arrested, like three years ago. Wow. Okay. And then, Michael, go ahead and introduce yourself in case people don't know. Yes. Hi, Michael. Um, I got to the church when I was five until the age, I believe, of 19 is when I left. Awesome, awesome. And Gabby and Michael are actually siblings. So that's that's how and then they are friends with Judas. So that's how we all met. And now they're my like, my, uh, my in my back pocket, my La Luz del Mundo little posse that when I have questions, I text them. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you guys for your support for helping me to um, kind of raise awareness about this because obviously uh, I'm very grateful to be an ex-Mormon and not an ex-La Luz del Mundo member. Yes. Um, as, a, as a little background for anyone who's watching this and hasn't seen my other La Luz del Mundo videos, um, La Luz del Mundo is a Christian church that was uh, started in Mexico. Uh, it translates to Light of the World. Um, it's it's international now, though. It's They've got a lot of members in the United States and, and various other countries, as far as I know. Um, they certainly think they have a lot more members than they do, or they boast of, well, they boast of like 5 million, but it's like probably more like 200,000 or something like that. Yeah. yeah, which is still pretty big considering how um, young the church is, but uh, not, you know, sure, surely not as big as they, they claim it to be. Anyway, this um, religion uh, recently has uh, picked up a lot more steam in the media because their apostle, which is uh, like the, the head honcho of the church, our equivalent in Mormonism would be the prophet. Uh, their apostle was arrested and pled guilty to a bunch of counts, uh, accounts of, of rape, of um, assault, a sexual assault against children, uh, production of child pornography, just like horrible, horrible stuff. And so the, uh, the, the news and, and more people are learning about this religion because of, you know, what a big deal this is for, um, for all of this to come out. So the, the documentary focuses a lot on the trial and, and um, everything coming out and Nason, the, the leader, Nason uh, Joaquin Garcia getting arrested, all of that. Um, and I've got more videos covering that in more detail if you want to check it out below. So right off the bat, I'm curious, just like, what were your feelings? And any of you can answer it or all of you. What were your feelings when you heard a documentary was coming out about La Luz del Mundo? Um, I was excited that it's going to be like 
in internationally known in the English language for um, right. for Americans or Europeans, the people that could understand what's going on, not just in Mexico or just Spanish speaking um, uh, news stations. It's going to be something international that people could understand what's going on, really going on. When I started looking into the religion, I could not find anything in English. <laughs> so I agree with you that that bringing it in English was a really, really big deal because there that I was like, how do not more people know about this? This is insane. And it's because like it was covered a lot in Mexico, but not so much in the United States. Uh, other other people want to answer that question. Your thoughts when the documentary was like in the works? Um, I guess I mean I was happy when I heard that it yeah. was coming out. I mean, especially that it was coming out on HBO because they didn't have to censor themselves. So it was open yes. more to having an actual um, dive in on what actually happened and didn't leave a lot of things out. Um, I don't know. I guess I was happy because, I mean, when I say, like, and I tell people, I was like, oh, I was part of this, you know, wannabe church. It's like some people don't believe it. Oh, so, I, yes, yes. You also open it up to like, well, this is actually what happened you know, behind the closed doors and, you know, just what we went through, you know, as members of part of that church. Absolutely. Were, were you nervous at all before watching it that maybe it wouldn't uh, portray your experience accurately at all? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And I don't think it did either. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to hear your guys' thoughts. I am so curious. Yeah. Like this, this religion has fascinated me for so long. And it, I think that it's fascinating me because there's a lot of parallels between it and Mormonism, right? You have this theology of we're God's only one true church. Yes. We have the only one true apostle or prophet mm -hmm. or whatever. And so there's, there's a lot of parallels, but but there's um it's it's a lot more strict the way that your members practice oh it. Oh my gosh! Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Judith. Were you gonna say something about that? No. It's just that uh, I'm just happy too. No, that um uh, finally the world is uh, looking at us, uh, looking at the truth. Um, and and I was so so excited. Uh, and yeah, it's just uh. I'm just happy. I'm just happy that uh, the truth is being exposed to the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So tell me before we get into the, the kind of like things you didn't like about it, tell me what things you did like about it. First off, I'm curious, like, was there some things that you feel like the documentary did really well that you really liked other than the fact that they were covering, you know, this religion and this scandal and everything? Um, I like that they they exposed it. That they came, they gave like a mini history lesson of what it is, where it came from, or where it started. Did oh. you think that their history was accurate in the way that they portrayed it of the religion? A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Yeah, you know what? That I um. Uh, is that uh, also because it's it, it the H because HBO you know it's a uh, um, uh, I mean it's as a company or as a uh, producer or entertainment company mm -hmm. they need to be careful um, about what they're gonna say or what they're gonna um, promote. promote you know and but. At the end, it's 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 what it is, no. But it's not it's not gonna be the only the only uh, uh, the the only show that is gonna be like covering. covering like everything that is going on with with La Luz del Mundo. Uh, we know it's gonna be more more um, um, uh, more shows, more uh, documentaries, and we are happy. We are happy uh, because of that, you know, like. Um, we want the, the to, to show not, not only uh, through HBO. It's gonna be Netflix. It's gonna be A and E, and it's gonna be more independent uh, um, companies that they're they're gonna be like like telling the truth about what what is the La Luz del Mundo. And I guess the other bright side of that is that, like you said, um, more people pick up the story, they dig in deeper, they find more information, hopefully more survivors come forward. I kind of hope more survivors come forward because then uh, 
maybe his sentencing could be longer, right? Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, because I, I don't think he's safe to be around people at all. I think that his power went to his head. And I think that, I don't know. It's, it's a scary thing. Actually, that's kind of a tangent, but I, I do have a question about him because what do you guys think that he's just like an evil, manipulative guy, which I think is possible? Or do you think that he really believes the weird things he says like that he deserves virgins and stuff like do you think he believes that i think in his psychological like i this is my observation i think that i don't think he believes he's the apostle i know he knows he's not but the power he does he knows he has a certain type of power and he, what yeah. he demands he's given gosh if that makes sense Oh yeah, what a power trip! Like being in charge of all these people that will just give you whatever you want. Like yeah. that could go to your head so easily. That could go to anyone's head so easily. And it's just sad that it went to the head of someone that was not mentally well. Clearly, not mentally well. Um, does anyone else have thoughts about that? I believe he, um, his personality. It's a uh, he's a narcissist. And with with uh, with all the power and the the money, you know, the control that they, they were controlling our lives since uh, I was born in La Luz del Mundo. I was born in Hermosa Provincia, where it's uh, in Guadalajara. The most special providence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think he's, I mean, he... Honestly, I mean, the way that I look at him is like he's a monster. He's a monster. Monster with money, monster with power. And it's he was um, entitled to have all of these uh, privileges in his mind. In yeah, his mind. absolutely. I agree with you that he's a monster for sure. Yeah, and, I, and, and because since I'm from La Provincia, I know I know Nason since forever and he was always because he was the, the 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 son of the servant of god he was always so like um his personality um he was like says how can i say this uh he was very like 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 full of himself i'm entitled i'm entitled to have this yeah. or i want to uh, i have the privilege to be uh we used to call them uh samuel the, his dad he was the king and the, his kids they were the 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 the, um, the princes and the princesses so yeah. he was you know like like since they, they were they were always um, um entitled to have everything and to have all the people like um uh to do things for them because they were special Right, right. And so for those who might not know what, what you're saying, Sam, Samuel was Nason's father, and he was the apostle before Nason became apostle. So in the church, it was more like Samuel's a king, and his children are the princes and prince. Yes, so, yeah. So it was like they were heightened to this status of royalty. They were royalty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that actually the documentary, I think, portrayed that really well because they did they did explain that. And I felt like they explained it pretty well, and at least from my perspective. So that was good. Um, OK, so back to the documentary again. Uh, so uh, anything else that comes to mind that you really liked that you felt like they did well as far as, you know, topics they covered on it or um people that they interviewed, you know, what, what are some of the things that you guys liked about it? I like that they brought new people in it. Uh, new what do you mean by new? Uh, the survivors. Um, I, new I, as I, in they hadn't been interviewed before? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That's cool. I didn't, you know, I didn't know off the top of my head, which ones were new, which ones weren't. I, I you know, I'm familiar with so chill, obviously. Um, I saw, uh, the only other person I was really familiar with was, um, you know, so Chill's husband. And then um, they showed a little bit of Sarah Mancares 
uh, from TikTok, her TikToks, I think. And I'm familiar with her. That's about all that I, you know, I could, but she wasn't a victim. Anyway, that's a side note. Um, other things you guys liked about Judith or Michael or Gabby, if you have more thoughts. I mean, I like the way how they showed it where, you know, apart from those victims shows how when they ask for something, they showed how the members just drop whatever they're doing to fulfill them, their desires, their wishes. They say they need food. You drop whatever you're doing to go get them food. So I feel like it, that's a good thing that they showed where how they controlled us, how they made us fear that if we said no, then where something bad is going to happen to us or our family. So I felt they yes. did it in showing that how just because they're the leader that if they say, oh, go drive six hours, you're going to do it because how are you going to say no to someone like that? I agree with you, Michael. I think they did a really good job portraying that. And I think they also, on top of that, portrayed kind of why a lot of the victims felt like they couldn't say no, because like you, that's not an option. That's just mm -hmm. not an option. They um, the nation that the mm -hmm. members had. And um, I also like how they showed how the members sell stuff. Yes, yes, because I've heard a lot about that from you guys. Yeah, they, so for us, when we want to sell tamales or anything, even we, if we wanted to eat one, even though we made them, we had to pay for it. Mm -hmm. What? Okay, wait, yeah. so you're, you're, hold on, you're volunteering we to had sell to. these items for the church, right? As like a we fundraiser for the, the church. We bought the ingredients. We made the food. We sold it. <laughs> we oh my God. That's yeah. wild, Gabby. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I remember hearing about that. Maybe I heard from Michael or AJ. I can't remember about the lots of selling things, right? Oh, yeah. For the Michael church. Day, Easter. You would go on the corner of the street. Like you baskets. would go sell everything. Flowers. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Did you get money back from the stuff you purchased or did it? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Of course. Why would you take money back? That would, that would be a I sin. If I knew uh, like they were keeping it for themselves, I would have pickpocketed some of the money. <laughs> <laughs> I would have just put some to the side. But at that point. Right. Okay. Oh yeah. my goodness. And, and yes. we the flowers ourselves, just so you know. Yeah. What? Well, wait, you picked the flowers yourselves? Is that what you said? The, yeah. the church would uh, collect the funds from the same members, go buy the flowers, go sell the flowers, and take the money to them. Oh, my gosh. Wow, they really had it all figured out, didn't they? Oh, yeah. um, one thing I really liked about the documentary was how they, um, they really showed people's loyalty to the group and how they talked about how like uh how difficult it was for the victims uh, their reference as jane does for people who don't know what that means it's because a lot of nasson's victims that came forward in his criminal trial were anonymous uh for their own safety because of how kind of scary this religion is and so they're referred to as Jane Doe's in case anyone doesn't understand what we're referencing. I liked uh, how they talked about the victims, you know, having such a hard time because their families were so loyal to the church and just how like hard that was for them. And I feel like that, um, that totally makes sense. Uh, obviously it resonates with me because I felt like when I, you know, left Mormonism, there was kind of this like, my family kind of felt like they were supposed to try to save me, be, you know, because of their loyalty to Mormonism. And I think it's still not near as extreme as La Luz del Mundo. Oh, no. La Luz del Mundo. You lose Oof. everyone. No. You leave or you talk bad about the apostle, about the church, or when you leave the church. Like when I left the church and I had moved mm -hmm. out, the pastors told my mom they could not speak to me at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was... It, yeah, it was it. It was bad. It's so sad. It is so sad to me when like a religion will We're tear exiled. families apart. That's what it is. We're exiled. Yes. Yeah. You get exiled, and see that doesn't really happen so much in Mormonism. It can. It, it's l much less common. It's much less common. Usually, they just uh, they might not invite you to things temporarily, but they uh, they might just they'll they'll keep sending you scriptures or they'll be kind of condescending or something but like even a lot of mormons are 
getting a lot better because Mormons are leaving a lot right now. And so like a lot of them are kind of like getting more used to it and it's making them like a little bit less judgmental around it, like and more patient, but you know, it varies from Mormon to Mormon anyway. So uh, other, other things you guys liked about it. I'm trying to think too of things I like. I mean, I liked getting the entire overview. I liked hearing specifically from some of the victims, like, very specifically what happened even though it was horrendous hearing it like michael said it was really great that they did it on hbo because they didn't have to censor it they didn't leave it up to imagination it like a lot of it was like here's what he asked me to do and then i did it and they they're very specific and it's horrific but also i think it's just really important not to just sit here and say like oh i was raped like it's important for us to understand the context of what he was asking and what he was expecting and and the severity of it all really came through the intensity of the abuse really came through because they weren't censored with that i was i forgot this but i honestly it was horrible to look at but i loved at the end when they showed his video in his oh, role yes yes actually i hope that the, some members of the church saw this so they could see that it's real Yes, that, Debbie. I didn't even think of that. Was, I didn't. Even, I didn't expect it in this. I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> wow, that's such a good point because it's like proof. So, for those who don't know what we're referencing, toward the end of the documentary, Alondra's husband talks about finding footage of um, Nason having sex with a bunch of women. And this was footage of like him with adult women. So it wasn't like child pornography. And they showed uh, kind of some blurred out stuff with it. But you could see it was the apostle. But as I laid things out, I saw two USBs. Two USBs that I didn't recognize. And it was hardcore porn videos of a woman engaging in sexual activity. And at one video, it was the head of the church. Nason was wearing a white robe, bathrobe. He was recording the sex and they wouldn't imagine jesus being such a way if he's got the authority of jesus and why would he be committing adultery and that's a really big deal because if a if a member watches this and they see that i wonder if it could really convince them that this is true because i wonder if some members watch it and they're just like no it's all made up you know so that was like pin yeah. in there like this isn't just victims making this story up like here's video footage that's a really good point gabby i didn't even so think of that what they're the mem what they're telling the members is that it was um, a montage that they cut him they they um what is that called when uh, they, cut him they, in they photoshopped, they photoshopped them in there that yeah. is not real oh my god okay <laughs> i was gonna ask about that because so has the church officially come out and said anything so like okay this isn't just the members speculating like did the the la luz del mundo actually come out and say just so you know this is what this is okay uh, um la luz del mundo um how do you call official or, or, or sure yeah the the spoke, spokesman spokesman the spokesman they, they they're not saying anything they're saying quiet. I, see. They, I see. Yeah, they're saying quiet, but they have a lot of uh, members having YouTube channels. Oh, and, okay, okay. Yeah, these these YouTubers, uh, they're been attacking us, people who are uh, speaking, uh, up. speaking up, uh, and that's how that's how they are telling the 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 members that everything is a deep fake. And oh my gosh. Yeah, official from La Luz del Mundo, they're not saying anything. They're so, quiet. So they're like the under the table communicators to the church. Mm -hmm. We yes. all know what, they're the official communicators, but the church is saying that they're not. Yes, to keep their hands clean. This is such a fucking conspiracy. <laughs> because the church has so much control yeah. of all the members. We know if a member says something wrong in church, they'll make them take it down. They'll make them like be yeah. quiet. They're not doing that. Yeah. That's such a good point, Gabby, because they have such severe control. You know that this is like they're kind of getting the they're getting the silent thumbs up, right? Because yeah. they they they're being watched. They're being watched very closely, I'm sure. And 
that's so interesting because it's a smart tactic for the organization to do to not not themselves address it because it can it's kind of like opening a, a can of worms right but they can just have these members you know promote faithful information on these youtube videos lies right that these things are just fake information and they can allow them to do that and then if they mess up they can throw them under the bus yeah exactly. and, and so it keeps their hands clean like exactly. it's a smart way to do it it's not honest Mm -hmm. but it's smart i guess <laughs> wow okay so do do you know and i don't know if you guys know this but does the general membership like most average more uh, members that are active do they know that the documentary exists or are they totally in the dark they have to know they have a phone yeah <laughs> they have i wonder right yeah they have to know yeah they know everyone knows you think so? Okay. Yeah, but, but Unless they're the ones that are up in a ranch in Mexico in a mountain that don't have any Wi-Fi, then I think everyone knows. I love, I gave you a very good point. Well, and I wonder too that, um, because, okay, so I think uh, you have, you have these members, right? That are like really, um, have this persecution complex, right? That means like the world is out to get our church, okay. right? Mm -hmm. And and when they have that mentality and a documentary comes out that is literally crapping on their on their apostle, then they must think like it, it's almost like proof that we're right, because why else would the world be attacking us? You know, it just it feeds their persecution complex instead of yeah. for some people, I imagine instead of making them question, they're like, oh, my gosh, like look, they're right. The world is out to get us. Well, you know what I mean? Or what do you think? Well, they're comparing Nathan to uh, Apostle Paul. <laughs> Wait, what? Okay. And Wait. Jesus Christ. They're comparing Wait. to them because of the persecution. Mm -hmm. But what they don't uh... understand is that Paul was in jail for preaching, not for pedophilia or rape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, he's in prison just like Paul. Yeah, Remember yeah, when yeah, Paul yeah. was arrested yeah. for, you know, teaching about the Lord? What's the same thing? Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I get it. I get drawing those parallels. But, you know, oh, you know what's something crazy from the documentary that I was thinking of is they talk about, and I don't know if this is true, but the victims talk about, you know, how they were groomed and how they would use stories from the Bible. Like, uh, like King David had all these virgins. It's like, wait a second. Like, wasn't he portrayed in the Bible to be wrong for doing that? And yet they take that example and use it to brainwash these girls. That blew my mind. They use the Bible. Also, they take seven to the, to brainwash the members. Mm -hmm. Like when we, we couldn't question why we had to send birthday money to the apostle or buy him a car or a house or land or anything or his uh, trips because he was a king and because he was sent from god he deserved it mm -hmm. because he you saved guys, my souls you guys had to send him birthday money oh yeah, yeah. we yeah. sold flowers oh, yeah. to send him money or be and, like, and that's just one church of oh, all the god. churches oh my YouTube god Church up like there's videos of members saying, oh, happy birthday, Father Mason, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So they make videos. Wow. Like how he sees them, but they make videos for him. Wow, that is so creepy. Like, that is so beyond what Mormons do. I mean, they may send the uh, our prophet, like, a letter, but they're not going to go on the street selling things to send him money. You know what's so funny to me about this is, like, um... You know, I've done so many La Luz del Mundo videos now, and I get I get members commenting on them. And it surprised me because I didn't think members would be allowed to watch my content. And maybe they're not watching it. They're just commenting. That's probably more likely. But uh, they'll say things like, it's not a cult. It's not, it's not, it's not. And I'm like, yeah, but you're selling they're... flowers on the side of the street <laughs> to give yeah. him birthday money yeah, exactly. so that he can go on these trips while like hurting a bunch of kids I'm like how is this not a cult it's it's crazy to me it's christmas money new year's money oh birthday God. money well uh, he's got to celebrate doesn't he oh my no, gosh it's so, it's so messed up oh, and family too. yep 
Holy shit. The okay, grown, so the mom, the yeah. everyone, because they oh are gosh. special. They are the, the royal family, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Wow, that is just so so crazy oh, to me. Oh, and we have to give every week our, our uh ten percent of our check. Dude, I didn't even remember until they said that in the video because it's the same for Mormons, 10%. That's a lot. That's a massive donation. Like really? Some people can't afford to feed their families if they're paying that much, which is just crazy to me. What happens if you don't pay the 10%? Oh, yeah. And they and some, some churches, the pastor mentions them by name that they didn't give. God. How is this not a cult? But I mean, obviously it is, but how do people not see it? And but it's so it's one of those things that's it's just so easy to see it when you're not indoctrinated, you know. And I get it, you know, I have sympathy for it, but it's funny to me. Every time I get a comment from someone on these videos saying it's not a cult, like uh these people are complaining, but these are just like good habits, you know, dress nice, you know, whatever, stuff like that. And I'm just like oh my gosh like wow this is weird wait wait what do you guys think when people comment on my videos like uh that are members do you think they're actually watching the video or are they not allowed to do that they're they're they not supposed to. to be watching them at all they tell them they cannot be watching anything any of them but obviously if they're commenting they're going against their rulers uh they're not obeying do you think that they think that they're justified, like they're doing some kind of good or something? Well, obviously they think that, but I'm surprised. I would because I was thinking it would be against the rules for sure. I'm gonna start responding when they comment, like it's not a cult. I'll be like, you shouldn't be watching this. Right. You need well, to repent. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you well, need to cool. repent. If the apostle knows that you comment on this video, oh my gosh. You should play. You're not allowed to do this yes oh my god that'd be so funny <laughs> okay so um we kind of talked about some things you guys liked and we can we can address that again if you guys think of anything else but tell me uh you watched it right tell me some of your thoughts of like things you didn't like things you felt like maybe weren't true or accurate um yeah hit me with whatever comes to mind i think everything i like everything i mean it's just like the, 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 they 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 exposing the truth and that's 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 and i don't know for me i think it was yeah. i think it was okay it, it i think um within the realm of what they had access to uh they gave a an overview of what the church is i think once this gets like hbo i think it's like just the foot in the door and I think other streaming services or other independent like people will be able to go more into what yeah. is actually going on, like during prayer or or what the members are told or how they're supposed to act, that type of thing. I do agree with you, Gabby. I felt like it was really lacking as far as what the daily life of yeah. a La Luz del Mundo member is. I And here's the thing. Maybe they just don't have the funding because they could have made this like eight or ten episodes easily. Yeah. And the first three episodes should have been talking about the daily life of a La Luz del Mundo member, set up how loyal they are, the, you know, the chanting, the praying, the money, the selling, like all of that set all that up and then yeah. get into the abuse but they kind of just like jumped the gun a little bit it, it was almost like it focused less on the church and more on specifically nason and samuel and their their abuse which you know is still better than nothing for sure but i do wish i think that you know it's hard for me to say because i you know i'd i would be curious someone as an outsider watching it that you know outside of you guys outside of me someone that's never known anything about it i wonder if they might be kind of confused because i already knew so much about it when watching it you know yeah, yeah. because like for me there it was a roller coaster watching it because things came up because i've been outside of church since 2009 so oh, it's been a long time, and was, yeah. And it was just like bringing up memories of stuff, like in, um, like yeah, bringing up uh, memories, things that happened. Um, and actually, it took me like a, I, I cried yeah. in some of the scenes. 
I cried from the memories of the stuff that they would make us do. Like in when we were for going to the Holy Supper, we were up by three in the morning because we were in the choir. Mm -hmm. so we had and we had to make a line and we needed to be approved first to get in the line. Uh, yeah. it, it was and and those all those details were missing, but I still personally remember them and it brought up memories and like it it was uh, it was triggering a little yeah. bit. Because yes. I, I cried. I think the second episode, I cried the most. Yeah. Um, that that one, yeah. yeah I think I triggering cried. is a perfect yeah. word. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Judith. No, I cried too. Just just then. The second and the third episode, I, uh, when I saw uh, Nason's video, I jumped out of the yeah. out of the, the couch and I was like, oh my gosh. We <laughs> knew that it was going to be a video, but we don't know what. <laughs> oh, wow. I I was waited. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I was, I was happy, actually. I was happy. I was so happy. Yeah. Michael, how did you feel watching it? Was it bittersweet? It was, yeah. I mean, I <laughs> cried as well. Yeah. Just from the yeah. way it was so descriptive. It, yeah. I mean, you could, I mean, you would probably, someone could probably imagine it the way they were talking about it. So to know that, you know, that they went through that and they couldn't, you know, ask for help. They couldn't, yeah. you know, they were scared to even bring it up to their family. So it sucks, you know, it was hurtful to know that all these years they held onto that burden um, instead of just releasing it and finally putting him where he should have been many years ago. Um, but then again, seeing it, I was like, the life I used to live when I was a part of that church to what I'm living now. To having the freedom to, you know, just, I love my life. I I mean, yeah, I work and pay bills and stuff, but it's to know to have that freedom to not having to look up to someone and being scared all the time to like, oh, what if this happens? Or what if I say this? Um, yeah. And those feelings linger on, I think, because yeah. sometimes you do something, you're like, shit, am I sinning? <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. 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 Like, that guilt is, it doesn't just go away. Yeah. I've been out for a long time. I'm like, oh man, I think like God frowns upon me doing this. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Oh, but we're oh man. Yeah, it, it's because you were there. I was there since I was seven. So I mean, I I didn't know nothing else. Of course, it's so deeply ingrained when you're there. You know, basically your whole life, and uh, or even for your whole life. Um. Uh. So. Oh, I I was gonna say something. You know, I, I wonder too, like, why they, I, I, it's such a, it's such a tragedy to me that they didn't get in at all with the, oh, what's, what's it called? When you're a teenager, the thing that you have to do to get oh, the saved. Revival? The revivals? The revivals. Like, oh, that's oh not gosh. only a scene. So let's say, for example, like my mom was, two, she was in her 30s when she joined church. Yeah, right. 1997. No, she was in her 20s because she was 37 when I made her a grandma. Oh, yeah. She, so she was in her... No, no. no, she was in her 30s already because she was 26 Maybe. when I was born. And oh. I was seven. So she was like 31, 32. Oh. Her early 30s. Yeah. And it does, so as soon as you get baptized, you need to ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit because then that, if you, even if you die, even if you could do all the good things, but if you die, you're going to hell directly. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And so for those who don't know what the revivals are, it's this really intense um, experience, a, a spiritual experience as a teenager where basically you're at church and you're crying and begging for God to save you. And you're hoping that you'll speak in tongues because that's a sign that God has saved you. And there's other people there begging and crying. And wait, did I explain it correctly? Or? Yeah. No, they make you repeat one phrase over and over again. What What is it? When now that I study psychology and stuff, I kind of get it because they're just making you go into a meditative state. Yes, yeah, <laughs> like a hypnotic state. They right? make you say glory to Christ repeatedly over and over and over again until you go into that meditative state. Gosh, that's so creepy. That's crazy. That's and it's, 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 the, it's one of the cultiest things I think that you could show in, in oh, video and form. And they didn't show it at all. No, we were kneeling on marble floor. It's dehumanizing. Oh. You're crying. And you're, you're kneeling the whole time. And if you get up, you feel bad. You're like, people are going to point at you me. You see people, people are so going judge me. And... 
yeah oh yeah oh yeah and they and the and the congregation will call it out because on sunday they'll say who was saved and you know who wasn't saved and so it's 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 humiliation you know it's crazy Mm -hmm. so i was sad that the documentary didn't cover that at all but hopefully if the if the documentary does well which I'm assuming it's doing well. I guess I don't have a way to, I mean, I guess I could Google if it, I, I don't know like uh, how many people are seeing or whatever, but if it does well, and I'm assuming it would, cause I think it was well done, even with the minimal amount of uh, episodes they had, maybe they'll get to dive more deeply into some of that stuff because that's, it's incredibly fascinating and it, it makes you, you know, it makes me feel for like the members and the ex members even more realizing like all of this intensity that they're being put through, you know, as a teenager, when you're young at 14, you need to decide if you're at 14. Okay. You don't even at 14, they make you decide if you're either going to follow the church and be loyal to the servant of God and the apostle, or if you don't, your mom has to kick you out of the house. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll get you to to praise uh praise Nason. <laughs> um, you know, one thing I'm remembering that I that I liked from the documentary again, um, to backtrack for a second, was I liked that they that a lot of the victims shared specifically some of the brainwashing techniques that were used, specifically saying things like because the I was so curious, like, how do you get these very Christian, very conservative girls to do these horrific things, you know? And because they know that those things are sins, but oh, blessing. Yeah. that's right. And that's that's part of the brainwashing is it's a blessing to be one of the the concubines of the prophet, the prophet or sorry, the apostle. And he has needs and like he's doing a lot he's saving all these souls like you just you know this is the least he could ask from you like oh gosh so awful but they also they talked about how it's not a sin like they told the girls it's not a sin because the apostle can't sin exactly and also they tell them or they tell us even if we do anything like clean the church or build a church it's a pearl on your crown when you get to heaven Oh, so these girls, they probably thought, okay, like, this is hard, but I'm going to have all these blessings in the next life. Like, how lucky am I? And that's just so sad. And that that was one thing that really broke my heart was hearing those girls say, like, wait a second, this wasn't a blessing. Like, Like, it was a whole eye-opening moment for them to be like, all of this abuse, all of these ways that I was abused they weren't actually blessings after all. And you can just see like, I don't know, you can see it in their face, like what a a mind fuck that was, you know, that was, oh, that was crazy to me. Especially the, um, the Mendoza, what was her first name? Oh, uh, Alitia, Alitia, Alitia Alitia Mendoza. And the the, his sister. uh, Oh, no, 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 Leti Topete. Uh And um, Leti Topete and Kayla Topete, the sisters who got mm-hmm. raped as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're oh, so there. sad. Yeah. And like the uh, Alita Mendoza, I know her. So when I saw her on screen, I was like, oh, <gasps> my God. Yeah, she's a really good person. Yeah, she, yeah. she was in choir with us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. that's Was that so heartbreaking, like, to, to see her? Oh, oh we my gosh. Her we didn't know what was going on behind yeah. doors with her. We just saw her oh there in the choir. Gosh. She was super sweet. Yeah. Wow, that must have been so hard. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was one aspect that was so heartbreaking to hear about is how he would tell some of these young girls, like, go bring your sister to me. Like, oh God, yeah. oh God. Like I'd, like I don't know how how those girls can get over that. that. Like that is just so traumatic, you know, so so traumatic. Uh, all of it was just so horrifying. Um and uh but i'm so grateful that it's all out there so tell me do you guys um have you guys heard of anyone like that was a member that watched the documentary and it caused them to leave now that we're still so fresh it's like 10 okay. days yeah at least at least really yeah at least uh, 10 members 
that I know. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. And yeah. it's only been like 10 days. So I yeah. bet way more. I bet way more. I heard, I, I was on Reddit a little bit on the XLDM and I heard some people saying like, I, I watched it and I'm done. Like, yeah. and that's amazing. That's so amazing. Like, yeah. because the less power this church has, the less um, these bad things can happen in the future. Well, they have less power because if more members leave, there's less money. Yes. Yeah. Oh, definitely want to take their money away. They are not using it well. Um, do you guys suspect now this is totally speculation. Do you guys suspect that um, like that the abuse might still be going on with within other leadership of the church? Oh, yeah, I think so. Yes. It sounded like the way the documentary set it up, like it was, it just sounded like it went beyond to me. Oh, oh yeah. Ju you know, it wasn't just Samuel and Nason. And Nason was participating in a lot of these, you know, inappropriate behaviors before he was the apostle. And so I just wonder, like, are his other siblings, like, and then are, or other people high up in the church? I, it makes me wonder. And that's why I'm glad that these documentaries are shedding light on it, because maybe, like, more, more transparency will happen. And maybe if there's any abusers out there, they'll be more afraid to, to do anything at this point, because the, they'll be worried about people speaking out about it. I hope so. I, I mean, I hope there's no more abuse going on, but I just... It does scare me. Yeah. They're, they're afraid to speak about it because it, nothing happened. So you can report it to your pastor, right? Let's say example. You report it to your pastor. The pastor, if it's a member of the church, they call them in. All they do, they tell the, the victim, stay quiet and, and the parents, stay quiet. We're going to put them in prueba. How do you mm -hmm. say it's um, It's like... um. Probation. Like probation. Yeah. So they're not going to be able to stand up to sing. They're not going to be able to take church or the blessed, take part of the blessings of the church mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time, maybe three months, six months. But that's all that happens. And they tell you not to report it to the yeah, police. Sorry, mm -hmm. Why do they tell you not to do that? I mean, I guess it's kind of obvious, but. Because it will just... be a, a sadness to the apostle. Yeah. <laughs> oh that is so sad they don't want any scan any scandal and I, I can't because the church need, needs to be uh pure and clean you know yeah, because they don't, they don't yeah so uh you're supposed to be like like quiet about it you need you need to keep quiet about it because you're gonna make uh, uh, the servant of God if he knows uh, what happened with you, he's gonna get really sad. Gosh, that's so awful. Yeah, I I get it, and I like I get like if I was a victim and say not of not so like someone lower, you know, in the church, and I was a victim, and you know I told the leadership or whatever, and they were like, okay, you got to keep it quiet. I understand how like I would want to keep it quiet because I wouldn't want to make my congregation look bad because mm -hmm. of this one guy. But it's so sad because these people um, that do these things are often, um, it, you know, it's dangerous to leave them going free because they could hurt someone else. So it's just so, They're so leaders, sad. And they don't even kick them out. They're, they could be like pastors in the church and they'll just move them. Mm -hmm. to another church oh my god that's awful there's no accountability exactly yeah. mm -hmm. oh my gosh so they just are sweeping so much under the rug wow mm -hmm. this goes even deeper than i than i've oh, even yeah. realized mm -hmm. that's so uh, man this church will never stop fascinating me uh well, this is just wild go ahead judith um yes for the record this is not a church this is a criminal organization yeah, we don't yeah it's, it's closer to a mafia or a cult. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. is a mafia. <laughs> I agree. I agree. It's definitely not a church. I agree with you, Judith. Yeah, cult like, is definitely these, the right term. Yeah, because none of these properties are in the name of the church, although the members mm -hmm. purchased it. They're underneath the Joaquin's name. They're under really? his. They're not under. They're not in, under the organization. We don't own them. The temples, wow. none of yeah. them. The members don't own it. But guess what? They wow. pay for it. Wow, that's really interesting. That is like a huge red flag. I yeah, I had no idea. 
Wow, yeah, that's yeah. so interesting. Okay, so um, so I'm so excited to hear that people have been leaving as a result of the documentary. I bet more and more will leave. Okay, have I? Yeah, I hope so. Right. Um, I have you guys heard much of um well actually i'd love to know okay you mentioned that there's some youtubers out there saying things about the documentary like that it's a deep fake that it's you know what other explanations are they giving any other weird explanations as to why this is happening like the the members like oh it's you know this isn't real or this is a conspiracy or whatever well that's the devil the devil wants to destroy uh, uh the church the devil and it's the devil it's uh, or, or it's a conspiracy uh, yeah but um from the catholic church oh yeah they're saying that it, the, the catholic church is behind this because mm -hmm. the church has grown so much and we're taking so many catholics away from them that they want to <laughs> stop it oh my gosh oh my God, that, is so funny. that is so funny i have heard that so many times from you guys like um your ex-members talking about that how it's all a conspiracy for the Catholic Church because mm -hmm. the Catholic Church knows that you guys are taking them down, which is so funny. It's just like, when it's like maybe 200, 300,000 members, like, holy shit, the arrogance. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And they lie to the members that the church is massive. It's, it's, it's on the top three of the biggest churches in the world. And, and it's a lie. Oh, yeah. Mm, oh wow yeah straight up lie that's crazy so any other weird things that they have said or that you've heard that they're saying to kind of defend the church against the documentary everything is weird in that criminal organization everything is yeah, so yes. <laughs> everything is so i mean once we are out and we see the truth it's crazy how they con how they control the people yeah. It is like, like, like I lost my family. I don't talk to my mom since That's three years so ago. Wow. It's crazy. Like, it's just like, 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 like the control, you know, like if, if you, if you, if someone left church and if they, if they start like, like, like telling okay. the truth or, 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 or became public talking about what happened to us, it's just like, Crazy. They or the just... devil. <laughs> yeah. It's it's crazy. It's it's oh no. And and then they 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 um they start talking bad about you. You're they they start to dehumanize yeah. you like you're the scum of the earth. Even yeah. though you grew up with them, they know you personally, you've ate with them, and they yeah. still it, as long as you don't touch Nason or the church, you're okay. They'll still talk to you. But as soon as you go against it or against Ooh. Nathan, you don't exist for them and you need to be getting get rid of. Yeah. That is so sad. That is so heartbreaking. I'm I do think example. Bubba yes, please. something bad about oh. the church, and I literally put a like on it, right? I didn't comment or nothing. I lost about 20 people. Okay, so. Uh, just to make sure I understand, someone posted on Facebook something bad about the church and you liked it mm -hmm. and a bunch of people on your friends saw that you liked it. So they unfollowed you just from that one like. And they blocked me. They just didn't unfollow. They completely oh, blocked me. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's how they are. Very and intense. And there are these people that I knew since I was seven. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is so sad. That's so heartbreaking. Your own family your own family I, there's nothing that hurts more than yeah that like no one can really understand what that feels like to be disowned by your own family your own parents your own siblings like that that that's just that's all that's a wound that goes so deep that yeah. it's so sad and it's so sad that this oh, this organization that's supposed to you know supposed to be a church is the yeah. thing that's tearing these families apart is just absolutely devastating. Yeah. What were your thoughts on Alondra's husband in the documentary and like him trying to stand by her? So for those who don't know who Alondra is, she was 
one of the groomers that was working for Nasso, and she was groomed by him since a young age and then turned into a groomer, bringing him young girls. Um, and she was arrested, you know. Uh, I think she got four years, right? And she's so she's in prison right now for four years, I think. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on his kind of attitude toward it all? Because I his he was like, I'm going to stand by you. And I was curious, like, what do you guys think of that? I think it's awesome. Yeah, I support him. I think it's yeah. awesome because he knew her personally. We only know the bad, yeah. the bad side of her. Yeah. We don't know her personally. And I think that is uh, an applause to him that he was able to overlook that and yeah. love the person, not the actions. And be stand by her side. I mean, she was abandoned by her whole family, her mother, her father, yeah. everyone. I I was I was really touched by it as well. And like I could see how it'd be a controversial thing, right? They'd be like, why would you stand by this person that did this terrible thing? But I don't I, for me, I just I look at the a lot of these women that ended up grooming and I just like they were groomed since they were like eight or 10 years old, a lot of them. And so for me, it's like they they're not thinking clearly. They don't know how to view the world in a clear way. So I have a lot of compassion for them. So I thought it was cool yeah. that her husband stood by her. But I also like wouldn't have blamed him if he didn't. But I no. thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, and it was cool that he he kind of gave her that push to tell the truth. To be yes. honest, with what's going on? Yeah. And not to you know, um, and and I think that 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 was that was really good. And I'm glad that she's paying or paid for what she actually did. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. yeah. Right. I I feel so conflicted about it. Right, because you have, you know, um, I don't know. It's like. So some of the women that were groomers ended up getting arrested and some of them didn't. And I, you know, it's a conflicting thing because like, yeah, I have this compassion for her because she was brainwashed, but also like, does she get no punishment for what she did? Yeah. Like just because she was brainwashed and that's hard. That's not, that's not an easy question to answer. It's really not, you know, because you could sit here and say like, yeah, if she didn't grow up in this situation, Alondra, if she didn't grow up in this situation, um, being brainwashed by Nasson, she probably never would have done those things. But I imagine that legally it would be dangerous to just offer people free passes because they're brainwashed, right? right? I, I exactly. agree with you. Because you could you could say that about Al Bundy. He was brainwashed. He was crazy. So does that yeah. mean it's hard to do what he did? No. Um, so right. I think, yes, you maybe give him a minor sentence, but also make them, because anyone could say, oh, well, I was brainwashed, so I did this, so I get a green card to do whatever I want. Exactly. I think that's a really good point. Okay. I don't think it's okay, because if it happened to you, why would you want it to happen to somebody else? Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I'm sure that, um, yeah, that, that that's a hard that's a hard thing for, for us to even imagine because, you know, we weren't put through all that. I imagine, like, I, I imagine in my head, I think, like, if these terrible things happened to me, yes, I wouldn't want them to happen to other people. But also you're, gri you're grappling with this whole, like, if you accept that you don't want it to happen to other people, that means you have to accept that you didn't want it to happen to you. But you're trying to accept that you did want it to happen because it's a blessing. And it would be so scary to accept the truth that it was a bad thing because accepting that is a bad thing all of a sudden means that you have to process all of this trauma. So anyway, that's like kind of like, I don't know. It, that's that's so complicated, though. It's so complicated to say. But yeah, I do have a lot of sympathy for them. But yeah, it's like, how do you find that balance of like, oh, they're brainwashed. But it, it's, it, you know, it's similar as like uh, just because someone doesn't know something's a law doesn't mean that they get a free pass. Like, oh, well, you didn't know that speeding was breaking the law. Like, oh, I guess we're not going to, you know, give you a ticket. Like, that's not how it works, you yeah. know? Yeah. So even with being brainwashed, people have to be punished. And I think sometimes it's in the best interest of, of everybody uh, simply to keep them away from hurting other people. Exactly. Although, although I would hope that this all coming out really woke Alondra up to realizing what she was doing was wrong. I don't think Nasson will ever wake up though. Yeah, and so and also holding them accountable shows other people that it's not okay to do it. 
that That's if true. you do it, you'll be held accountable too. That's a really good point, Gabby. That's like, that's really important because you're right. I know in the legal system, they talk about that as far as like, you're, you're not just sentencing this person, you're setting a precedence exactly. for other people who might do this thing. And so that's a really important thing to take into account as well. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it's just, there's a lot. Um, it, it's just, uh, it's just sad. It's, it's sad that all of this atrocity happened. It's sad that it happened in such a um, progressive era, you know, like <laughs> that, that such awful things could happen. And it's scary to think that it could continue to happen, which is why I really hope Nason dies in jail. Yeah. <laughs> I really hope so, because uh, they did not a sentence him for very long. Actually, do you guys have any thoughts about that briefly? Like, he got 16 years. 16, 17? Yeah. 16, 16, 16 and 8 months. Eight but months. Yeah. He got some paid off already for time served. Right. Three years that he was like waiting trial. And I, what are what are your guys' thoughts on that? I loved that the documentary mentioned that, that they put it like next to these other people and was like, hey, like this sentence is way low compared to these other people that did less or did similar things. Like, why, why, um, what are your guys' thoughts on that? I think drug dealers get more time than what he got. Why do you think that is? Was it just like legal yeah. loopholes from his I, lawyers? He had good lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Very good lawyers. He had so much money. He probably, that's probably why, is he got the best lawyers and they found all these little loopholes because the, the judge himself was like, my hands are tied, which suggests yeah. to me that legally it was the most that he could do, which is just so sad, which is why we need more victims to come forward I, I to love give him more time. That the judge, like, at the end told him, you are what you are in public, loudly. Yeah. You are, he's a monster. You know? What oh, you dude. You are a sexual predator. You are a sexual predator. That's what he told him at the end. I loved what the judge had to say at the end. And he treated the girls with so much respect and okay. consideration. And like, it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate that legally he couldn't get more time. But I, I loved the judge um, from what yeah. I, from the um, clips I saw. He admonished the families that abandoned these, these girls. That was my favorite part. He basically <laughs> said for, for the girls that, that their families abandoned them, shame on you. Yeah. Shame on you. And that was oh, that was so good. That was so good. Okay. Um any uh any other thoughts? Like this answers like a, a lot of questions that I had. Um, any other thoughts of things you liked about it, things you didn't like about it, things that members or ex-members are saying about it? I mean, the only thing I saw after the show came out was this uh post about some someone was saying that like the people that left, like the way we're talking about it, like going against them, that how, like, how do we flip that fast when, like, when Samuel died, that we we're crying to God for a new apostle or for revivals, we we're praying to God to take us as his children. So people are saying, like, well, if you did that, so how are you going to be the person you are now going against, you know, the man you once loved and looked up to? So I feel like they're trying to diminish that of, like, yeah, I mean, they don't want to grasp the idea that you were. Technically, you were scared for your life being stuck in this world because you had no other option. You couldn't say no. The only answer yeah. was yes, yes, yes to everything. Yeah. And also, I think once inside, because we are so cradled or coddled in that area, because we can't talk to people on the outside. We couldn't yeah. have friends in high school. We couldn't do any of that. So we didn't know anything else. Yes. Yeah. This is just yeah. reality. Yeah. And we didn't know the their hidden agenda or their that information because we it was withheld from us. So Absolutely. once you get out and you see it with clear eyes, like without the spectacles, you're like, oh damn. Yeah, yeah. If you had <laughs> been able to talk to friends, you might have seen sooner yeah. how weird it was, but you're so isolated, like you yeah. said. Yeah. Yeah. And Michael, I like that you brought that up because it they try to um basically make you look bad right they try to say like oh you were crying when nason died and or uh, when samuel samuel died and now you're like uh screw nason and it's like 
wow, you're really, you know, how did you go from there to here or whatever? I, I get how they would do that as a means to try to like diminish your, yeah. your yeah. experience. Like yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's one of those things that it's similar in Mormonism. They'll say, like, when you leave, they'll say, well, you never really believed. Like, you never really believed. And it's like, well, yeah. I, I, I thought that I did. I mean, you know, but they have to say that because I think it's a way that they cope with it because they think, oh, well, you can't fall away if you believe. Like, yeah. that's just yeah. not possible. So it's like, it's that kind of thing. So us say it again. They call us tumors and they need to cut us off. Or cancer. Oh my gosh. Oh, you lovely people are not cancer. <laughs> you guys are I'm not. not. <laughs> it's, a of, it's a thing of like, like you had nothing, like how God was saying, you have nothing else to believe in because you have three prayers a day. There's people that go to each prayer every single day. 5 a.m., 9 a.m., 9 6.30. Sunday is an hour twice. Uh, basically, okay. basically okay. all day. Yeah. yeah. All you do is get out to go eat, sit for like an hour, and go back. Yeah. Uh, Thursdays again is an hour. Yeah. It's like you're. It's it's a it's a schedule you're a part of. And then if you're a part of other activities like choir, you have the days where you're gonna go to your studies oh or God. practice, or if you have to go to another state to practice, you'll go. It's like it's you know nothing else. Yeah. So and, yeah. So when I was you're so in exhausted, it, yeah. It's cool, like oh, we're gonna go party. I was like, well. I mean, we don't do that. I mean, why are you doing that type of thing? Right. It's like you, they make you believe that everything else in the world is wrong. Unless, yeah. You, and yeah, it's just they make you believe everything else that everyone is doing is wrong. And what you're doing is what you're supposed to be doing to get to heaven. You question them and then you question yourself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You gaslight you, yourself. You are your own police. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this was this was so good, guys. Um, any other closing thoughts that anyone has about the documentary about mm -hmm. La Luz del Mundo? Anything else? Not right now. No. I just hope that if you know the new ones are coming out, go more in depth than what like the life was. Of how yes, I hope so too. Did, the activities you were doing, the time that Reflect. you that that yeah. week a week and a half you spent in Mexico, daily consecration. It's like that type of lifestyle. Where hopefully, they will show in these new shows. And I hope they know that there's others that they could reach out to help, even yes. for to think or how to react. Because once you're out, you're like, oh damn, what 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 do I do with my life? Yeah, I because right. that and was your world. That was your world. You didn't know anything outside of it. So right, like, and you might be totally it. alone. Yeah. Yeah, it is a process. You know, it's a process. Um, it's it's like they lie to you all your life. Yeah. You don't know the world out there. You don't know nothing about- Because the world's um, evil. Yeah. Like, yeah. even yeah. they uh, 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 they made you dress, if you like, like for us, for ladies, they uh, make us dress with long skirts. Uh, you cannot wear any makeup. Sleeves. Uh, and, and it's like crazy. When I left the cold- Jewelry. I was like, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to dress, how I'm going to react. And even until now, it's, it's hard for me to make friends. It is very hard Absolutely. for me to make friends. You know, uh, uh, I'm going to start therapy. I'm going to, because it's hard. It's hard when you. It is really hard. It is. It, and, and it is a process, you know, but there's help. There's help. There is help. And I, even, even the, um, when, I, I mean, I go to therapy already and my therapist was, flabbergasted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and she's been in the a therapist for i mean sorry a psychologist for 20 something years and she says she has never heard of anything like it yeah isn't that crazy to realize like that's how severe it is it must feel really validating right oh yeah yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I love all of your guys' advice um before we go judith do you want to mention the nonprofit? Yes, um, we uh, we open up a non for profit organization. Uh, we we've been helping the victims, survivors of La Luz del Mundo, and um, so that's why uh, everything that it's it, it's hard to leave the cult is hard, and and we need the support, you know. It, it, um, and 
that's the reason why we, as, uh, as survivors of La Luz del Mundo, we open up this non-for-profit organization. And we just, uh, even, even we have an, a YouTube channel uh, where we talk about, uh, it's in Spanish, uh, so we talk yeah. about, you know, the support. And they're not alone. We know yeah. there's a lot of people, they can't leave the, 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 the cult because if they leave, they're going to lose their family. Yeah. And they don't, they, they, they have no other choice but stay in the cult. And it's hard. It, it, it's, it's been really hard for, uh, for us and for, for all the survivors to, to live. But um, we're here. We're here. And, and, and uh, we have a really, really nice community of ex-members. Um, and there's help. There's help. So, uh, yeah. And, and if, um, if they want to help us with a donation, uh, I mean, if you can uh, put the, the link of the, our website. So, yeah, yeah we the, uh, our office is in Los Angeles. But, yeah, we're being helping a lot of survivors. And we are happy that um, we have this uh, um, um, organization. Uh, so, yeah, so we're being open for one year, for one year now. Thank you for sharing that information. I love that you guys are trying to help provide that support for people that are leaving because when you leave a cult, especially one where you might lose everyone you know, like you don't even have uh, the education or financial resources to like stay alive, you know, to get yourself away from the, the cult. And so I think that's amazing what you guys are doing. So like thank you for members, sharing that. Yeah. Some members work or like SLDM worked for members of the church so when they left church they lost their job yeah oh my gosh that's it so is. sad it is, that it is, is so sad it oh is. that well um i will have that link below if anyone's interested in donating this is a great cause it's a season of giving and if you you know you're not paying your mormon tithing anymore this is a much better place to send that money <laughs> um yes. awesome well thank you guys so much for your time thanks for talking to me about this documentary I was really excited to hear your guys' perspective because that documentary was really fascinating and I'm really glad that it came out. And I, I loved hearing that it, like Judith alone knows 10 people that watched it and was like, I'm done. That's incredible. That makes me so yeah. happy. Yeah, more do as well. I hope oh, so. Yeah. I hope so. Luckily, it'll, you know, I think it will just keep, you know, I could see it five, ten years down the road, people, you know, still seeing it for the first time. And that that's just, I think it, it's going to keep doing a lot of good. So thank you guys. Um, thanks for everyone who's watching this video. Thanks. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.